So now continuing our look at the background with the female reproductive system, we'll entitle this next flowchart Background 2, and we'll subtitle it Main Organs Continued. So that's what we've been basically looking at throughout the last video, or at the end of the last video we looked at the main organs, um, and now we're going to continue that look. Just remember, as we're doing this, take a look at figure 46.10 to get a nice visual illustration of the structures that we're speaking of. So, the next structure I want to go over is um, the one that we sort of uh, put to the side. We talked about how the oviducts are going to come from the uterus towards the ovary and cover it with that funnel-shaped structure, and then take in that secondary oocyte and have it pushed down towards the uterus for whatever reason. Now let's talk about the uterus, because it's a very important overall structure that's necessary for female reproduction, for human reproduction as a whole. The uterus is oftentimes referred to as the womb, um, and it's going to consist of two major parts, of two major sort of sections. The uterus will first consist of a myometrium. This is the outer structure of the uterus of the womb. Myo refers to muscle, and metrium refers to the Latin way of saying womb. So this is the womb structure, of course, but it's specifically the muscle womb structure. Why is that? The myometrium can then be just simply considered this. It's a thick, rather uh, thick structure that consists of smooth muscle. It's a thick, smooth muscle wall. So it's on the outside for that reason. And it's going to be a structure that expands. It has this capability of expansion. And when do you usually see a myometrium expanding in a woman? This is usually actually during pregnancy. There's a reason why she can withstand the stretching that's happening. And that stretching that's happening internally a little bit is happening because of the fact that this myometrium, this outside smooth muscle wall, is also expanding during pregnancy. So that is one part of the uterus. The other part of the uterus would not be the myometrium, but the interior of the myometrium. What is the myometrium covering as a wall structure? It's actually covering the endometrium, which we'll do down here. So endo means within, and this is the within womb, the within metrium. So let's look at the endometrium. The endometrium is a structure that consists of connective tissue, it also consists of glands, and it also is highly vascularized. It has lots and lots of blood supply, lots and lots of blood vessels for that reason. Now, there's a reason why we need blood vessels here. There's a reason why we need glands and connective tissue here, which we'll go over. So the endometrium, we can first state the following. It's going to be a structure that's cyclically, cyclically, so on a regular basis at the same cycle, it follows a cycle. That cycle is thickening. It cyclically thickens in preparation, so in prep for a possible pregnancy. That's its job, to thicken, to become a thicker structure. And the reason why is because you need to support a growing embryo. And that growing embryo will need more uh, we'll need blood supply, we'll need these glands to produce certain hormones and certain uh, chemical molecules that are necessary for its overall development. And in order for that to happen, you need the endometrium to thicken, to become bigger, to become a little bit more expansive. And this happens in a very regular cycle in females, in the female reproductive system as a whole. And that regularity is all dependent on whether or not there's fertilization. So if there is fertilization, if sperm does meet egg in a female reproductive tract, because remember, that's where we have the receiving of sperm, and that's where, thus, we're going to have fertilization within the female. What's going to happen is, if there's fertilization, the embryo itself, the zygote, therefore, the sperm plus egg, is going to implant and develop here. It implants here. And how does it implant here? Well, first of all, the secondary oocyte is released, it's released from the ovary, goes into the fallopian tubes, moves down the fallopian tube via the cilia and beating contractions, and then it meets up with the sperm. Sperm fertilizes it. That turns into a zygote. That eventually becomes an embryo. But this embryo has to be somewhere, and it goes right here. Endometrium goes into the uterus of the female, and it implants itself here. Now, the interesting part is that what if there's no fertilization? Because this is usually the norm. Usually, 
there's no fertilization in the female reproductive sort of scenario. If there's no fertilization, you have this thickened tissue, and we'll get to how it thickens as we talk about the menstrual cycle, but you're going to have this thickened tissue and you're not going to have pregnancy. You're not going to, this thickening is all for preparation, just in case. But what if it doesn't happen? The thickened tissue would then be sloughed off. That's the term that we're going to use here. This is a biological term, a very nice term to remember, sloughed off. And this process of sloughing off this thickening tissue, this thickened tissue is simply referred to as menstruation. And we're going to look at that cycle in much, much greater detail a little bit later in this lecture. So that covers the uterus. The next structure we want to cover um, is the cervix. Okay, so now the cervix is going to be uh, anatomically speaking, simply the lower portion of the uterus. So this is the lower portion of the uterus. It's going to be a structure that specifically is there as a, a separation, sort of. And it specifically is going to separate uh, the uterus from the vagina. And that's sort of its overall goal, is to provide this separation. In addition, it's important to note that the cervix, this is sort of a similarity, you could say, uh, it's sort of a rough similarity, but it's also a site of a, a common cancer. It's a common cancer site. Cervical cancer is quite common in women, much like prostate cancer is quite common in men. And this cancer um, is usually via a virus, a viral infection called HPV, human papillomavirus. There's actually a vaccine for this, and it's highly suggested that maturing women, usually around the age of 14, 13, 14, 15, get the HPV vaccine. And that vaccine was actually very recently developed, I think maybe in 2008. The guy who developed it actually won a Nobel Prize for it because it actually prevents cervical cancer. Because if you get HPV, what usually happens is you get cancer of the cervix as a result of HPV. But if you get the vaccine that prevents HPV, you will prevent the development of cancer at the cervix. So very nice clinical relevancy for this structure. So now moving forward, we've covered the uterus, the cervix. We have two more to cover. The other major organ to cover is the vagina. This is going to be a muscular tissue that's also part of the female reproductive tract. In addition, this is going to be a structure that actually extends outside the body. Because for the most part, what we've been talking about is the internal nature of the female reproductive system. This is going to be the first moment at which we talk about a structure that extends outside the body. So this is sort of the first time we look at the external female uh, reproductive system. And in addition, the vagina is going to be the specific part of the female reproductive system that, that does one of the specific functions that we mentioned very early on. And that is the fact that it receives, directly receives, the penis plus the sperm. And thus, it's going to be a very important functioning organ of the female reproductive system since it covers one of the major functions that we already spoke of. And then finally, last major organ, the last major structure to cover in the female reproductive system is the vulva. Again, this is uh, continuing on the external part of the female reproductive system, but specifically, this would be considered um, an external genitalia. And it's the external genitalia that covers the external opening. And that external opening is through that vaginal opening where the penis is received and the sperm is received also. So now we have a general overview of the main organs associated with the female reproductive tract and the reproductive system as a whole. We're now going to be looking at the process of oogenesis which occurs at the ovary in much greater detail in the next video.